Uh, hi students, I try in this educational video to technologically introduce the general rules for opening resistance and reinforcing element sizing based on the American calculation code ASME, of course, as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. Well, I'll try now to explain the resistance reinforcing model. So, based on the ASME Section 8 Division 1 UG-37, we have two situations. The first situation is where there is no reinforcing element. So, in this situation, we will just verify the resistance of the opening. And uh, the resistance and reinforcing model is depicted by the figure that you see now in this slide. On the left, we have the case where the nozzle is inserted through the vessel wall. The vessel wall here is the shell or the format head. And on the right, we have the case where the nozzle is abutting the vessel wall. Now, as you can see, this model involves the vessel wall highlighted here in red. And as I say, the vessel wall can be a shell or a format head. This model involves also the nozzle, and as you can see on the left, uh, the nozzle is supposed inserted through the vessel wall, but on the right, the nozzle is, suppo uh, is supposed abutting the vessel wall. We have also the reinforcing element, and this element is not considered in this case, uh, the case without reinforcing element. And we have the wells, the outward and the inward uh, nozzle wells and also the reinforcing element weld and in this case of course the reinforcing element weld is not taken into consideration now in order to better assimilate the characteristic dimensions involved by this model just keep in mind that d refers to the diameters r refers to the radius t refers to the thicknesses c refers to the corrosion allowance h refers to the height of the projection of the nozzle, of the nozzle uh, beyond the inner surface of the vessel wall and uh, for the subscripts uh, just keep in mind that p refers to the reinforcing element uh, n refers to the nozzle uh, i refers to the internal projection and r refers to the required thickness of a seamless shell based on the circumferential stress while Rn refers to the required thickness of a seamless nozzle using a joint efficiency E equal to 1. Now for the areas involved in this model we have first the rectangular dotted uh, area denoted by the letter uh, capital A and uh, this is the cross-sectional area of reinforcement required in the plane under consideration depicted by this model. We have also the area hatched to the right denoted by the letter capital A subscript 1. This area is the cross-sectional area in excess thickness in the vessel wall available for reinforcement. The model involves also an area hatched to the left denoted by the letter capital A subscript 2. This area is the cross-sectional area in excess thickness in the nozzle wall available for reinforcement. There is also a cross-hatched area denoted by the letter capital A subscript 3 and this area is the cross-sectional area in excess thickness uh, in the projection of the nozzle uh, wall inside the vessel uh, available for reinforcement. And there are uh, triangular dotted areas denoted by the letter capital A subscript 41 and 43 and these areas are the cross-sectional areas for outward and inward uh, nozzle weld available for reinforcement. Well, all these cross-sectional areas are determined based on the formula that you see now in this slide. And here, in order to better assimilate the different uh, quantities involved by these formula, just keep in mind that FR1 is a strength reduction factor 
equal to Sn divided by Sv for nozzle wall inserted through the vessel wall. Here Sn is the allowable stress in the nozzle and Sv is, is the allowable stress in the vessel. And as I explained, the vessel here means the shell or the formed head. This uh, strength reduction factor FR1 will be equal to 1 for nozzle wall abutting the vessel wall. FR2 is uh, a strength reduction factor equal to SN divided by SV in all uh, the cases. And F is uh, a correction factor that I will explain in depth in the next video. But here, just keep in mind that this correction factor F is equal to 1 in most cases. And the factor E1 uh, that I will explain in depth in the next video, but here just keep in mind that this factor can take the value 1 or 0 0.85 or base it on the joint efficiency uh, depicted by the table UW-12 uh, in the ASME section 8, division 1. Uh, the values that uh, E1 can take are uh, based on uh, the location of the opening with regard to the weld joint. Well, based on this model, two cases can be obtained. The case one is when the sum of the cross-sectional areas available for reinforcement is higher than the total cross-sectional area of reinforcement required in the plane under consideration. And the case two is when the, this sum of uh, cross-sectional areas available for reinforcement is less than the total cross-sectional area of reinforcement required in the plane under consideration. So, in the case one, uh, the, the opening is adequately reinforced, so the resistance of the opening is verified. So, it's okay. But, in the case two, the opening is not adequately reinforced, and pay attention here, we have to add a, reinforce, a reinforcing element or to increase the thickness around the opening. Now I will handle the case when the reinforcing element is taken into consideration in order to size this reinforcing element and base it on the same model. We have uh, the, cross, the, the involved cross-sectional areas and here we take into consideration in addition uh, the cross-sectional area uh, relative or associated to uh, the reinforcing element and the cross-sectional area associated to the outer element weld uh, associated to uh, the welding between the, the reinforcing element and the vessel. So uh, these cross-sectional areas are uh, determined based on the formula that you see now in this slide. Uh, in order to better assimilate the quantities involved by this uh, formula, just keep in mind that uh, FR3 is um, a strength reduction factor equal to the lesser of Sn or Sp divided by, uh, by Sv. And here Sp, Sp is, um, is the allowable stress in the reinforcing element. And FR4 is uh, a strength reduction factor equal to Sp divided by Sv. Well, as I explained before, the opening is adequately reinforced only when the sum of the cross-sectional area available for reinforcement is higher than the total cross-sectional area of reinforcement uh, required in the plane under consideration. This is summarized by uh, the inequation that you see now in this slide and that uh, particularly involves A5 as uh, the cross-sectional area of the reinforcing element. Thereby, we can determine the minimum cross-sectional area A5 associated to the reinforcing element. Uh, and based on this, we can determine the outer diameter of the reinforcing element uh, denoted by dp if, uh, the, if we set the thickness of this reinforcement element and vice versa. This educational video takes end. Please mention all your remarks and suggestions in the comments. Thank you very much.